Okay, so in this next series of videos, um, uh, what I, what the, we have a goal. The goal is to give compactifications Uh, to compactify C, and so there's going to be three different types. I mean, they're they're going to be equivalent. So this is this one point compactification. Uh, this guy here is the complex projective line, and this is the Riemann sphere. So they're all going to be the same thing. So this allows us to talk about, um, you know, what it means to be holomorphic at infinity or holomorphic um, uh, you know, to infinity. Okay, so it allows us to take in infinite inputs and infinite outputs and talk about when things are holomorphic there. Um, why do we want to do this? Well, this will eventually allow us to talk about, which was, which was already mentioned in class, that um, holomorphic maps, uh, so these guys here will just be rational functions, and uh, eventually that automorphisms Uh, so so these two guys are polynomials and then uh, automorphisms so these are going to be Mobius transformations so I want to talk about the Riemann sphere and compactifications of C. So I'm saying compactifications, but they're all really equivalent. Okay, so um, let's start with the, the basic one, so definition. So we're going to let, um, so C hat, this is going to be C union, a single point. Um, so this is a new point, C union infinity. So this is what's called the one point compactification. Of C. So as a set, it's this. So um, but as a topological space, um, we need to say what the open sets are. So, um, so the open subsets of uh, C hat here. So this is going to be the open uh, subsets of C. So the usual open subsets union. So now we have to sp specify what neighborhood the neighborhood of an infinity looks like. So this is going to be here. So it's going to be the complement uh, the complement of compact subsets of C. So uh, this is going to be compact. So closed and bounded subsets here. We take the complement, and these guys here will be neighborhoods. So, of infinity. So these are just open. These, by definition, those are the open subsets um, of infinity in this new topology. So we can prove compactness. So here's a lemma. Um, this new topological space is compact. And let's do a proof. So. So let ui, so let c hat be the union 
of UIs. Okay? <coughs> These are open sets. Okay, so we need to show that it has every open cover has a finite subcover. So since um, uh, infinity is covered, so there exists some U0 uh, open containing infinity, and hence um, uh, U0 looks like the complement of a complex set with infinity by the definition that we gave on the previous page. Okay? And uh, so the so this is a compact subset of C, K. Uh, so to um, so it remains to cover all of uh, uh, to cover K. And so we know K um, K, K is, uh, is contained in the union of, um, UIs for I and I with UI, not zero, U zero. Okay. So it's a union of all these guys, but K is compact. So there's a finite subcover and K is contained in the union and let's just call these I is equal to one up to N of U I. Okay? So therefore uh, putting putting the cover of this guy and the cover of, of, of uh, infinity together uh, this gives Uh, C hat is contained I is equal to zero. Oh, Z uh, zero up to n of U I uh, as a finite subcover. which shows that it's compact. Okay, so how do we visualize um, how do we visualize this guy? So we visualize this using the Riemann sphere. So and the observation is the following. So we can take the complex numbers, right, and we can put them in bijection with the plane. So like here's the complex numbers that sits in the plane. Uh, here's the sphere. This is the unit sphere. It's contained in R2 or R3. Here this is contained in R3. And this is where the, the third coordinate is zero. Okay, so this intersects the plane and some some thing here. So this is the North Pole. Oh, sorry, this is just the coordinate zero zero one, and what we're going to do is we we can establish a bijection between points on the sphere and points in the plane. So if this is the point A B C. We define a map phi from uh, the the two sphere with the point removed. Okay, so this is where the third coordinate is zero again, uh, given by phi of a, b, c is equal to the, okay, so the point where L intersects the plane, z is equal to zero. Okay, and so um, L is the line through the North Pole and ABC. Okay, 
<coughs> so this is the definition of, of this map. This is the Riemann sphere, and you can see that if if you let um, this thing get closer and closer to the North Pole, these points gets further and further out, and the North Pole becomes this point at infinity. Notice again that the South Pole here, so if we did this line here, so this corresponds to the point zero, uh, zero, zero, or in the complex plane, this would just be the point zero. Sorry, this is R2 here. Okay, um, we can actually work out what this is. So an exercise would be to show that phi of ABC looks like A plus BI over 1 minus C. Um, okay, so let's, uh, you, you can maybe pause this or, or fast forward if you want, but here's the solution to this. So the line, we do a parameterization of the line, and we're just going to do a straight line homotopy. Um, let's do, well, let's do this A, B, C, 1 minus T. And this thing looks like, well, let's actually do, let's do this, okay, so this is 0, 0, T, plus A, 1 minus T, B1 minus T, C1 minus T. Okay, and so this thing here is, well, A1 minus T, B1 minus T, T plus C1 minus T. So this is uh, A1 minus T, B1 minus T, and then we have. Uh, 1 minus C, T plus C. Okay, and when this is 0, that's where it intersects the plane. So we have 1 minus C, T plus C is 0, which tells us that um, so T is equal to C over C minus 1, which tells us that L of c over c minus 1. So this is equal to um, so a 1 minus c c minus 1 b 1 minus c c minus 1 0 and this thing here if you work it all out this is A over 1 minus C, B over 1 minus C, 0. Okay, so then these are the X and Y coordinates that we did before. Yeah, so the minus sign gives, uh, let's just flip this there. <coughs> okay, so the other thing to note that I mentioned is that note that uh, the south pole, this guy here, we have phi of the south pole is zero. Okay, so the south pole This corresponds to the point zero in C. In the North Pole, this corresponds to the point infinity in C hat. Okay? So hence, um, uh, this C hat is in bijection <coughs> with S2. So it's actually a topological equivalent to S2 as um, we have that, here's the sphere. Okay. So here is our sphere. And then we have that this is really, uh, so 
here's our sphere with let me, let me draw it like this we have this cover by by two open sets like this okay so this is the chart this is the the this is with s removed this is with n removed and they're really the same thing here so um, so the idea is is that the compactified complex numbers are just two copies of c so this is this is what we saw was one copy of c this is one copy of c and this was another copy of c okay but you know they have most of their points are in common except for just this north you know this one, this guy here is missing the north pole which this guy has and this guy is um, missing this guy here is missing the south pole <coughs> which this guy has okay and so uh, note that we can also see that if we if we look here so here's the north pole and we look at some sort of uh, open sets around this Right, when we project it down, we're going to get some uh, some subsets here. Okay, so this guy here corresponds to this region all out here. So we can see that um, uh, open subsets. Slash the North Pole let's see uh, these correspond to complements of compact subsets of C Okay, so you can kind of also see this uh, more visually from, from this picture. Um, there's a third description of the compactified complex numbers, which is given by a complex projective space. Or the complex projective line. Okay, so let's define what the complex projective line is. And this is a kind of our preferred uh, version. So P1, uh, so this is going to be, we take the complex numbers here. We're going to remove the origin. And then we're going to mod out by the units in C. So this thing here is the complex uh, projective line. That's what this P1 is, um, and it's a quotient by a group action, so this is something we, d we talked about in class. Um, and we take the group action like this, so um, and we just multiply each of the coordinates like so. So lambda is going to be a complex number, a unit, so this is a non-zero number. So this is the action. So it's a quotient by a group action, and um, and so essentially we're taking all these points in t two two pairs of two complex numbers, and we're modding up by this. Um, so let me just make a remark. Uh, some people call this uh, CP one or P one of C. Okay, so these are two other notations. You might see this in other places. So um, let me give some notation. So we talked about equivalence classes. So um, so z0, z1 for a tuple of points, so a point in here. Um, so these guys are going to be an equivalence class of these points. Okay, and, and sometimes these are called homogeneous coordinates. Uh, 
homogeneous coordinates. Um, and I just want to make a remark that uh, here, C0, Z1 is just the same thing as lambda Z0, lambda Z1. So it doesn't matter if we multiply these, it's going to define the exam. Uh, uh, these, are, these are just going to define the same point after we multiply by a complex number. So um, if uh, we have some point, if, if Z1 is not equal to zero, right, then note that uh, that the point uh, z0 divided by z1 in, in here is well defined. Okay, so what do we mean by that? So we mean that, um, so, so it has to be independence of the choice of equivalence class. So if we have uh, this guy, so note that z0 over z1 is equal to lambda z0 over lambda z1, right, for lambda and c. So uh, it doesn't matter what representative of our homogeneous point we have, or our homogeneous coordinates, right, um, it's still going to give a well-defined complex number. Um, so if z1 is equal to 0, uh, then there's really only one point. Then this this point, um, so uh, z0, 0, so this is just equal to 1, uh, 0, because we can't have both of these not be, both of these equal to 0. We remove that point, and this guy, uh, we have this, so it's a single point, uh, and we identify this point uh, with the point at infinity in this guy here. Okay, so in particular, uh, these two things, uh, this gives a map. here from P1 to C hat, so this is the one point compactification where we take our homogeneous coordinate and we map it to the following, so we do it Z0 divided by Z1 if Z1 is not equal to 0 and we map it to infinity if Z1 is equal to 0. Again this thing is just C union infinity Okay, so we, we, we have a um, uh, kind of a, a, well, not kind of, this is a, a bijection between the one-point compactification and um, P1. And this is actually a homeomorphism. So this is a homeomorphism. Okay. And uh, it allows us to, to talk about um, uh, the what coordinates look at like at infinity. So this, okay, so let me just say this. This description of the compactification of C uh, allows us uh, to describe uh, coordinates at infinity. Uh, in particular, um, if we look at the set here, so these guys are in P1, where z0 is not 0. So this gives a map to C where we take our guy and we map him to z1 over z0. Okay, and we can call this zeta. Okay, and we can note 
that uh, well okay this could be uh, let's call that C so note that uh, phi inverse of 0 is equal to well C0 zero, 0 sorry uh, okay so sometimes we write those with a semicolon sometimes we uh, sorry with a colon sometimes we write them with a comma um, so this is equal to the point one zero which I told you was infinity okay alright so um, here we see that the projective space right so P1 is can actually be written as two things so this is the set of Z0 Z1 where Z0 is not equal to 0 union the set of Z0, Z1 Z1 is not equal to 0 um, and in, in terms of our coordinates here so we have two things so this is this guy and this is this guy so this was the so we had in terms of our sphere, right, uh, this thing we could consider some sort of zeta plane. And this could be a z plane. They're both isomorphic to C. Right? And um, so where, you know, we define z0 over z1 to be equal to z, because right, this is a complex coordinate. And uh, z1 over z0 to be equal to zeta. This is a complex coordinate as well. And we see that from these things so that these guys are related by uh, zeta is 1 over z. So this is like our usual complex coordinate. And this guy here, this copy of, of, of c uh, has our, our point at infinity in there. So in terms of um, so I mean, let me just say this, in terms we, we can look at the intersection, so what does the intersection look like? Intersection of these two open subsets of P1 look like. So here, so this thing here, so this guy is the charted infinity. So this guy, C0, Z1, so this is what we call like the, the part of infinity. So this is like the open subset of infinity, um, the open subset containing infinity, the copy of C containing infinity. So this is the usual Z coordinates. And so in terms of Z coordinates, This z coordinate makes sense because here we're looking at both of these. So this is the set of z, an element of c, where uh, z is not equal to zero. Okay, so um, from now on. We will identify a C hat with a P1 and use this identification of 
this guy here with infinity. Okay, so again, let me just remind you what's going on. Is that, So let's just recap what we did. Okay, so... So what we did is we defined a compactification, a one-point compactification of the complex numbers, right? And to give this, we gave this thing a topology, okay? We proved that it was a compact set. And then we talked about how to visualize it. And to visualize it, we put a bijection of, so we took the unit sphere in R3, this is, and we, if, if we remove the North Pole, right, then what we can do is we can put establish a by well an almost bijection between the unit sphere and all the points in the complex plane, and the way that we do that is we make a line between uh, the north pole in a point on the sphere or the north pole and uh, the complex numbers, right? And then we intersect say the north pole this line with the complex numbers to get a map from the point on the sphere to a point in the plane. Right? This establishes a bijection. Using this, if we send this point out to infinity, we see that the point at infinity corresponds to a point on the the uh, the north pole. Okay, and then we we worked out with the computation of of what this this map actually looks like. So it was a plus b i over one minus c. Okay, so uh, this is what I mentioned before. Another thing that we we mentioned is that the the sphere here is really covered by two sets right one where we remove the north pole and one where we remove the south pole and in in terms of the compactified complex numbers this is there's one open set where we remove the point infinity that's the usual copy of the complex numbers and then we have another set where we remove the point at zero that's another copy of the complex numbers okay and you can see this thing that i said about where the the open sets of uh of the the point at infinity really correspond to um, open sets around the, the North Pole under this, this map. Okay, so this is a homeomorphism. Okay, there's a third description, which is the nicest, well, which is one that we like, the one that I prefer, and this is in terms of the complex projective line. So this is really kind of a line where um, we add an extra point at infinity. So what we do is we actually take all the points in C2 and we mod out by C star. This, this construction is kind of weird, but we're, what we're doing is we're actually going to take uh, lines here, or points here, and we, we associate their ratios of these two numbers. Okay, so okay, so what we're doing is we're actually modding out by, um, by multiples of these guys, and what this does is it allows us to look at ratios of these things which are well-defined. The ratio of z0 to z1 is what we consider the typical copy of the complex numbers. And um, when this doesn't make sense, there's only one point, and this is the point at infinity. Okay, This thing gives a map um, between, so this allows us to give a map between p1 and the one point compactification here like this, where a point in here goes to a usual copy of the complex numbers if, if the denominator makes sense. Otherwise, we, we let this be infinity. This allows us to algebraically relate uh, these coordinates. Okay, so like here, it allows us to talk about coordinates at infinity as one over the usual coordinates. So this is what I called zeta. This is this new coordinate. And it allows us to take this extra point in this, in this complex projective space as the point at infinity. Again, here's what I was saying is that here we have like one copy where where the the south pole well this is what, what what corresponds to the south pole being removed we have two copies of the complex numbers you know one where infinity is removed and one where this is removed and then the 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 coordinates that we need to use for the point at infinity is is that we flip this and so note that here when z goes to zero or sorry when yeah or say like when zeta goes to zero, z goes to infinity, or when z goes to infinity, zeta goes to zero, right? So these two copies of the complex numbers are related by this relation here, okay? So to get coordinates at infinity, we just need to take, you know, like one over our guy and send it to, to zero, something like that. Well, not something like that. That's what we do. So, um, so z is one over zeta. And as zeta goes to zero... 
right? This implies that z goes to infinity. And we'll work, that's that's what we're going to work with. Okay, and, and um, yeah, again, like I gave another description of these two open sets, and those, those are the two open sets corresponding to the two parts of the sphere, and um, that's the description I want to use for the compactification of, of the complex numbers.